Tangerini's from Santa Fe, just outside of Mexico City. We are in this gorgeous park called La Mexicana. There's green grass everywhere, trees. The other day we were here and there was just oodles and oodles of dogs, even a poodle. Oodles. Oodles yeah. of poodles? <laughs> Did someone say oodles of poodles? Hola, buenos dias. Buenos dias. <laughs> oh my god. So. Your favorite. My favorite park ever, obviously. <laughs> but we also have all these skyscrapers lining the park, which is just sort of fantastic looking. But that's not why we're here today. We're here to tell you some things that shocked us about coming to Mexico City. It, this was our first visit ever, somehow, even though we've been in Mexico for like 15 mm -hmm. months and basically visited everywhere else. So you would think not much could do that. Not much would surprise us anymore. But this is Mexico City. A lot did. That Even that surprised me. A lot about what surprised me surprised me. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. <laughs> okay, so to lay the groundwork here, we just came from Lima, Peru. This is a huge city filled with 11 million people. When we got there, we weren't expecting the traffic there. That's something that shocked me, the traffic and the freaking honking, just nonstop all the time. Cars honk at everything. I expected Mexico City to be like that. Oh so yeah. <laughs> I expected the traffic here. There's tons of traffic, no shock about that, but there's not tons of honking. Like, people cut people off and you gotta do what you gotta do and the traffic is crazy and driving is crazy, but the honking is minimal, if, if yeah. any. One of the, there was one time we heard a lot of honking and that was when there was, the lights were messed up and both <laughs> lights turned green at the same time and everyone was honking at each other. Yeah, thinking, so everyone was like, yeah. no, I'm supposed to go, I'm supposed to go. But yeah, everyone was, because everyone had the green light. It was insane. <laughs> so it's the middle of June. We're in central Mexico. One might think it's going to be hot here. Something that was super surprising was just how cool it is or how cool it can be in the middle of the summer. And it's actually like noticeably cooler here in Santa Fe, probably because it's a little bit higher in elevation and we're closer to a big forest. Uh -huh. But I was pretty surprised by that too. The weather has been just gorgeous while we've been here. One night we're out getting drinks. We have pants on and a shirt and then it starts raining. Like it wasn't raining on us, but it was an outdoor restaurant and it was freezing. We were so cold. Oh, I like, remember that specifically because I was not wearing pants. Oh, I yeah. was wearing <laughs> shorts and like a t-shirt and I, I, I was just like, what the heck happened? It was like sunny and freaking hot earlier. <laughs> And that leads us into our next one, which is because the weather has been so nice and it's been really cool out, like between 60 to 80 degrees, we very easily got sunburned on a few days because it didn't seem like it was that hot and it didn't seem like the sun was that strong. So we got home and it was like, oh crap. <laughs> the other thing is, oh, in our defense, we couldn't find sunscreen anywhere and we had baggage limits and all that yada yada. We had to pay freaking 198 pesos for this momentito. 198 pesos for this tiny little thing. It's like Mexico City wants you to get sunburned. <laughs> you have to be careful with the sun here though. Like there were days where it was overcast in the morning. It looked like it, we weren't going to need sunglasses that day or anything like that. And then the sun, sun comes out later and it's super strong despite not being too hot here. That and I think the fact that the elevation is higher puts you closer to the sun, which means it's easier to get sunburned. I would expect the sunburns. I would expect what happened to us where we're living in Puerto Morelos in the Riviera Maya. But here, not so much. <laughs> the next thing that's totally crazy is just the enormous amount of things to see and do here. It's insane. And I expected that when coming to Mexico City just based on all the research we've done, stories we've heard, videos we've watched and all that. But what threw me off, what kind of surprised me was how overwhelmed I felt by it. Like on the first day or two, I was literally just, I, I was totally paralyzed by all of the <laughs> options of stuff we could do. I couldn't make any decisions and it was just like, oh my gosh, where do we even begin in the city? I, yeah, yeah, even talking about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, the feelings, <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. <laughs> right away we went to Chapultepec Park and this place is massive. It's double the size of Central Park. There's a bunch of museums within the park. There's like a military base, a the lake. A castle. Uh, yeah, a castle where the president used to live. It's just just that park alone. <laughs> I, I swear we could spend days there and well, not see and we everything. Did. We went there three times on three different days and I, we still didn't see everything that you could see in the park, like not even close. <laughs> yeah, we maybe explored a tenth of it. <laughs> yeah. 
Where are you going? There's a zip line. There's a zip line. It starts yeah. up here. It might start up there, but you gotta get it first. Well, I'm next in line. Oh my gosh. <laughs> do you like sit on it? You can do whatever you like. Oh, gross. It's sticky. Kids have been here. <laughs> All right. Here goes. Okay, I'm coming to get you. No, ah! stay up there. Stay up there. No, you're, you're supposed to stay up there. I was going to pull you back. <laughs> this is cool though, that, that's right in the middle of this park. The next thing that really surprised us was how many people warned us about pickpocketers. Getting your phone and wallet stolen or purse stolen is so common here. That's been one thing that's been on our mind this whole time, wearing our backpacks on the front when there's a lot of people around and always keeping a really close eye on our stuff. Based on these warnings, I've kind of felt like we always had to keep our head on a swivel, like looking left and right, looking behind us, making sure people aren't following us too closely. I think it's kind of sad and like a major I don't know, would you say a defect or like a downside of Mexico City? Because that's one thing I enjoyed about Guadalajara was that people were super honest. Like you never hear stories like that or rarely that people get their stuff stolen. I felt like I could leave my backpack on the back of a chair, go to the bathroom and come back and I wouldn't have to worry about it. So yeah, pretty, pretty crazy that that's such a huge issue in Mexico City. This thing would never be allowed in the US. <laughs> I want to be a kid in Mexico City. <laughs> The next thing on the list, it's just a me thing. Jordan was not super shocked by this, but I genuinely was. When we got to the Mexico City airport, the internet there in the lounge was so fast. And internet throughout the city has proven to be so freaking fast. I was genuinely shocked that it existed, that it was this fast anywhere in Mexico, because we haven't had that before. Where we're living right now, it's four upload for, what is it, gigabyte? Four megabytes per second. Four, four megabyte upload in the lounge. It was what, like 60? 65. 65, 65. On a good day, we get four and we are paying for the fastest internet possible. That just totally floored me when we were here. It was like, oh my gosh, you can't, you don't even see the page loading. It just happens in a blink of an eye. <laughs> and I was expecting that. Generally, the bigger the city, the faster the internet. But in this, our travels fast, throughout. this fast, genuine shock. <laughs> Genuine shock. <laughs> Not shocked at all. When it came to Mexico City, I had this picture in my mind of people being basically shoulder to shoulder everywhere because it's over 20 million people here. So we came here and we're like, we're all the people. We've been a lot of places here. Very few places have there been like Lines very out packed the door people. Or like, yeah, shoulder to shoulder on the sidewalk. It's what I expected in the traffic for Mexico uh -huh. City. But as far as like on the sidewalks and in restaurants and stores or whatever, yeah, I mean, it's like everyone's always in their car because <laughs> they're never on the sidewalks, they're never on the stores. Mm -hmm. Those are really short swings. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that surprised me is not that they're skyscrapers, but most cities, at least in the US that I'm used to, have one downtown area where all the tall buildings are. Here, you look out and you can see tall buildings all across the city. They're everywhere. And some of these buildings are super, super cool. Like, I love this one behind me here that's like the jagged line one. That's a Soriana <laughs> building. And then there's a BBVA building that looks super cool and lights up with all these colors at night. And the other part of this with the whole set, sky... And the other part of this with skyscrapers, can I not say that word? The other part of this with skyscrapers. Rasca cielos. It's and the other thing is, it's not just brand new skyscrapers everywhere. There's actually this huge range between brand new, modern, cosmopolitan, and then super historic, like the cathedral at the Zocalo and the ruins right next to that, which are hundreds, if not thousands, of years old. So really, there's just this huge range between super historic and what's going on in the modern day. Another 
shock with sticker shock. <laughs> Damn, some parts of the city is expensive, are expensive. Maybe not compared to like San Francisco, but compared to traveling around Mexico, ay. Yeah, I mean, there were many restaurants that, that were more expensive than what we would be paying in Phoenix, so. Yeah, like. That was like really surprising to me. Uh, I think our first lunch that we had here, I paid over 200 pesos for it, and I was still quite hungry after finishing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of expensive, I have a feeling these are right in that range. We made a quick stop at this cafe within the park. I got a kombucha for 85 pesos. And I got espresso for 35 pesos. <laughs> This next one, I think I should have totally expected this, but I was super surprised by how much, how many options there are for transportation. Taxis, Ubers, uh, there's like DD car and probably other versions of Uber, uh, colectivos, buses, double-decker buses, the metro, and probably others that we don't even know about. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you have all those bike rentals, all those oh, various yeah. brands of scooter rentals. Uh -huh. We tried out some of them while we were here, but we didn't use buses, we didn't get on the metro because of the whole I, I'm I'm thing. a little scared to go on the metro, honestly, but yeah, so much transportation. Like you, if you don't have a car or you can't afford Ubers and stuff like that, there are plenty of options. Something we get asked a lot on our channel is, can I get by without knowing Spanish there? Or how much English is spoken in the various cities that we're visiting? Yeah, and I, this was another huge surprise to me. I mean, I expect this in tourist destinations like Puerto Vallarta or Cancun, mm -hmm. but here in Mexico City, we would go into restaurants. Maybe, it was probably the neighborhoods we were in, but we'd go into restaurants and they'd be like, would you like a menu in English? <laughs> well, and like, generally people sort of just like offering it up. Like, yeah, yeah, a lot. Approaching us with English and trying to probably be accommodating or maybe to practice for themselves, like to have the opportunity to do that. But I, for it being like central Mexico, it is a little bit surprising, like you said, in comparison mm -hmm. to tourist destinations where like, like they kind of have to be speaking yeah. English to to get those tourists to I never come. really yeah I never really thought of this as a tourist destination but I think it is very much so when we were in some of the more popular neighborhoods to visit like Polanco or La Condesa or Roma or Centro Historico we saw a lot of English heard a lot of English in the museums that we went to around that area there was typically a version on each display in English and in Spanish yeah and on signs the same thing so and it's very <laughs> likely that many of the people that we interacted with in Spanish also spoke English because it oh. does seem more common here yeah um, and maybe that's just like the education it's the city set up to where you learn both um, but yeah it that that was a huge surprise to me that we would hear so much of it mm -hmm. Hello, Chandrinis. it is our last day in Mexico City we are packing up our stuff Jordan is checking out right now and we are heading to the airport so now that our first time in Mexico City is over, we're kind of looking back at the trip thinking like, what could we have done better and some of the big mistakes that we made while we were here. So the first mistake that we made was booking a place this staying at Hyatt House in Santa Fe. This was a nice hotel in a very nice area, but I do feel like we wasted a lot of time in Ubers mm -hmm. back and forth trying to go to the center of the city yeah, and places. Sorry. Places that we wanted to go. It was about 45 minutes to most places that we wanted to go. And that's if there wasn't traffic. One day it was, um, I think it took over two hours to get from like central area to back here in Santa Fe, so that was just nuts. The next big mistake was not putting on enough sunscreen because it was always a really nice outside when we were here and some of the days it was pretty cloudy. We ended up getting some pretty terrible sunburns for that reason, which was just stupid on our part to not always be putting on sunscreen. The next big mistake we made was not making a general outline of the things that we wanted to do. We had vague ideas of what we wanted to do, but... But I think we could have done a lot more if we had made some type of a rough structured outline as to what we were going to do on which day so that we weren't feeling super overwhelmed or thinking, okay, what can we do here? What's there to do there? But it is a big city, so I think we were appropriately um, thrown off by that. Do you agree? <laughs> it was almost like there was so much to do that we're like, Okay, well, we're just gonna stay home and do nothing yeah. <laughs> because we can't do everything. Yeah. <laughs> not, not actually, but that's kind of how we felt. <laughs>
it's like when you have so much homework to do in school that you're like, okay, I'm going to take a nap. Yeah, <laughs> or, I'm going to clean the house instead. Or, yeah. <laughs> and the other part of this is that everything we did took longer than we expected it to, whether that was walking from point A to point B or the transportation involved. Every Uber we got in it ended up taking more time than the original estimate. Yeah, always, every single time. The next big mistake we made was underestimating how much everything was going to cost. This city is way more expensive, at, at least the parts that were recommended to us, than almost every other place we've traveled in Mexico. So towns. Yeah, yeah. The next mistake we made while in Mexico City was not taking some type of a basic city tour. We usually do that. We did in Lima. We took like a bike tour. We didn't do that. A bike tour, a food tour, a bus tour, anything. And uh -huh. I think that would have really helped us kind of get a lay of the land and feel a bit more comfortable doing things, going places, and like just knowing just having kind of a sense of the city. So we yeah. usually do that, we didn't, and I think that was a mistake. Yeah, um, and we, we should have known that because I think one of the best things you can do when you go to Guadalajara is take the Tapatio tour, which mm -hmm. takes you to various parts throughout the city. Yeah. And that's a great way to explore. Yeah. Another mistake we made, at least in the beginning of our time in Mexico City, was not utilizing other <laughs> forms of transportation. For example, we had a lot of places we wanted to go that were a little too far to walk so we ended up taking an uber but we could have downloaded this app called mobike and then just pick up a bicycle and be there in a few minutes or any of the other like five dozen options for like yeah. scooters and bikes and whatever else and we never did get on the metro it's just something we didn't want to do because we've yeah. heard too many stories of people getting their stuff jacked there. We just weren't familiar enough with the city to do that. And when it comes to like buses and colectivos, I feel like it's pretty difficult to figure those out sometimes. I forgot what we were talking about. Anyway. <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to take it out. What was I saying? Where were yes. we? It's pretty difficult to figure out buses and colectivos and stuff in a city that you... Oh my gosh, these announcements need to stop. Okay. So, I think in our case, we kind of just wanted to stick to... Okay, now that the 46 minutes of announcements are over, what I was trying to say was... <laughs> Figuring out bus lines can be pretty difficult in a city you are familiar with, so in this case we were kind of opting to pay more to take Ubers uh -huh. than to try to figure out the buses or the metro, even though there are things that can help you out with that, and people could help us out with that too, but I do think it was a mistake not to utilize the bikes more, or the scooters, because yeah. it doesn't make sense to add another car to the road, more traffic to the road, when we're just going like a mile and a half somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that can be an 18 minute drive here, yeah. and it often is. Yeah. Another error we committed. Oh, this has got to be the noisiest. I was just going to say that. This is the noisiest airport I've ever experienced. We could hardly have 30 seconds to record this. Okay, what other errors did we commit? The extreme changes in weather. We just weren't prepared for that. Like, it would be really nice out one day, and then a few hours later, it comes to sundown, and then the temperature drops like 80 degrees. N not not actually, but... So we left our And the last very big mistake that we made was not trying more food, typical food of Mexico City. And we usually try to do that when we go to a new city. We're trying to try the stuff that's just unique to that place. But when we looked back at all of our recommendations, we noticed that people were saying general things like, go to Kindesa, go to Roma, but not more specifically, like, this is the best restaurant, or this is the dish you should try. So if doing this differently, I think we could have just asked people more specifically, like, for guidance, for help. I think I would have loved to do a food tour. Yeah, that too. Like, Foods, having drinks. someone taking us around, showing us, like, very typical Mexico City, because we really didn't get into the food culture. Yeah, I feel like we totally failed in the food department. The other thing is, there was always breakfast included at our hotel, which was nice because food, like restaurant food, had, was pretty expensive uh -huh. here. 
Um, so it was nice to save money that way, but like we didn't try any breakfast at all anywhere yeah. in the entire city because of that. So these are at least the errores that we realized we made during this trip. I'm sure Chilangos out there would know a bunch of others that we did, so please be gentle on us in the comments. Hope you like this video though. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to see more travel vlogs we have coming up. We are headed back to Puerto Morelos now, but later in the year we have some more international travel, national travel within Mexico, and we will be going back to the U.S. So we're going to be all over the place. <laughs> and one more thing. Gong that bell so you get notified when we put out our new videos. <laughs> and we'll see you soon.